Hey everyone, thanks for watching this video. Uh, today I'm going to go over closures and how closures work in JavaScript. Uh, this was a request from one of my students, so I kind of wanted to do like a quick video on how you can use them and what they're for. So um, closures, you know, they're like a big word. It's kind of weird and confusing. Like, what the heck are you talking about? Closure? Like, what is a closure? But if you think about it, um, it just basically means that you're um, protecting variables from being manipulated. And you can do that because JavaScript allows you to, um, with scope, to keep variables encased, closed off from being manipulated. That's where the word closure comes from. Um, closed off um, through function scope. So this is always best uh, illustrated by an example. Uh, just because it's so weird of a concept <laughs> for people starting. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, the thing you want to pay attention to is scope in JavaScript. So we'll start off with, you know, like, um, a simple variable, we'll call it A. And for those of you who are, you know, familiar with JavaScript, you know that this A um, exists on the window. So if I said console log <coughs> window.a, We get one. It's the same thing as saying var dot a because window is the global object in this case. Um, so if I wanted to create another variable, let's see here. Well, before I do that, I'll just say um, my function here. I'll call this my func. And uh, if I had another variable called b in here, I will say two. Then I wanted to do console log a plus and then I ran the func. Uh, let's see here. What would we get back? What would we expect to get back? We get three. So the reason is that this function here knows about a because a is one level above um, what's ever here inside here for b in console log. So this my func can see the variables outside. But my question to you is can Anything up here, see what's inside here. What if we were to run the reverse? If I were to say, let's take out our console log and I just leave this here. And now I try to run this. <clears throat> what would happen? We'd get an error because as far as we're concerned, A can't see B anymore. B is closed off by my function, right? My func. This is closure. This is a closure variable. I can't manipulate this variable. I can't even read it. I can't say a plus b because it's now gone. You know, like it's not within scope. So how do I get this? The closure, the cool, the cool thing about closure in JavaScript is that we can access this variable um, and we can do stuff with it and we can protect it from outside manipulation. Um, but, you know, down here later in our code, maybe we could refer to it later. So you know, um, if I had a method in here, you know, that's uh, console log or even just return b, right? If I said return b <clears throat> and let's see here, I said var c equals my func, and we can do this in JavaScript, basically the return the result of uh, my func to c, and then I could do var a equals a plus c, I could console log my new value of a. So essentially, if I run this code, now a is 3, was 1 up here, but I could get the value of b by returning it. And I could return the value and store it in c. So here I can manipulate c, but I can't manipulate b. So it's almost like I have the ability to manipulate b, but I have to use a different variable for it. So that's kind of in a nutshell how closure works. I protect b from ever. I can't set b or I can't change b without a special function. And to kind of give you a little bit more illustration of how that works, we'll just continue building on our example. So now let's say <clears throat> I want to change b. So this time I'm going to return an object as opposed to a regular variable. So here 
um, I'm going to have two methods. I'm going to call it one update, and it's just going to be equal to a function. And we'll just say that we're going to get we're going to expect some kind of number, and b is going to equal num. And then we also want to be able to show what our new value of b is. Um, we'll just do this. And then one more for um, just read, like so, or maybe we could say get function. And actually, we don't need num here for here, here, here. So show, we want us to console log the value b. Here in our get function, we just want to return b. So that way, you know, like, now instead of returning just b, I can return a whole bunch of other um, cool things along with my b. can return an update function, a show function, a get function. So I'll say var c is equal to, and let's just make sure we took out all of our errors. I think that will do that. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, it probably has to do with this. Yeah, so okay. So C is now equal to my func. So this time if I say C is equal to my func, we're not going to get back E, we're going to get back an object. And we can prove this to ourselves by just looking at C. So we'll run this. And now you can see that C is not just E, it has this object with get, show, update. And I can use it right away if I clear the console. I can just say get, show. And I'll take out this also. And my value is 2. Now I can see b. I can update b to 4. See show. So now it went from 2 to 4. And if I wanted to say var d equals a plus c dot get, and I wanted to console log the value of d, clear this, run, I can. a is still 1, and then 4 is now the value of b because I've changed it up here, and d is equal to 1 plus 4, which is 5. So this is really nice because our closure allows us to um, still continuously use a variable that no longer is within our scope anymore down here in our code, but it's protected. We can still reference to it by memory um, because the function always keeps track of it. You know, in JavaScript, it always remembers its internal variables. So even though they're gone, like down here, and we can't refer to them anymore, we essentially can with our you know methods that we give ourselves when we return that them to us in an object like this with an update method, a show method, and get method. So if you understand this, it becomes easy to understand how you can build your own kind of um, constructors, if you will, using this object notation um, that allow you to basically update and manipulate variables. So if you've ever used like you know libraries like Backbone or you know, you used other libraries in JavaScript that don't have you use the new keyword, although Backbone does make you use it. <clears throat> um, it'll, you know, you'll have a better understanding of how you're able to use like update, show, and get methods. Um, that's kind of the nice thing, you know, because uh, in this case here, I'm not able to change b down here except without these methods. I can't go in here and say c dot b, you know, because that wouldn't work. You know, like it would. I said console's log c dot d, what will we get? I'm curious. I love looking at these kind of things because I'm always curious to see what I get. And of course it would be undefined. Um, but yeah, obviously it's undefined because there's no b. There's b is suddenly a new property on c that I haven't defined yet. In order for me to uh, define it, I would have to say something like this, you know, and then I could check it out. But again, here I'm hard coding the B, which is the new property. And yeah, it moves from undefined to VJ. So I hope that was a good lesson on how closures work. It takes a while to kind of understand them, but you know, like the you know, thing to remember is it's always local variables that are permanently trapped within a function that um, 
you know, they go away, but you can return those values through custom functions you set yourself, and um, you can still use it down in your code. So the thing to remember, is, you know, like is that the closures are variables that you protect, but then can refer to later with your own methods. If you don't, then you can't use it um, because it's no longer in scope. And uh, you have to work with whatever variables are up here. So I hope that was a good explanation. I'll try to do some more uh, until next time.